You are now tuned in to a very special edition of United Football Media. Tell me about it. This is the number one spring football media group covering the number one spring football league, the United Football League. We are back and better than ever for this week, at least, because we had some humongous news dropping earlier on today. Everyone's favorite subject, some of our most popular videos that have gone up, one of our most... Uh, sought after most popular discussion points the ufl is leaning into it it's looking like it's happening the ufl officially announcing that they are looking and the way that this happened was interesting the process is interesting and we're going to get into that on this episode uh among of course i know all of you want to talk about all of you want to hear about perspective what these markets might be but there's a lot more to it that we want to dig into right here on this episode i am joined by one of our finest content creators on the channel. He is from the Bama Bullpen. He is from the Caballeros uh, Corner or whatever, Caballeros Confidential. That would be an awesome name that you could call that show. Uh, my man, uh, Josh from the Cow Pasture, joining me tonight on Tell Me About It, a special edition because we had to break in on this breaking news. Um, what is interesting about this approach that they have taken the UFL this time with this? So is they yeah, so announced. I'm, yeah, go ahead. go ahead. Sorry, sorry about that. I was just going to say, uh, I can already warn you before we go any further that my opinion on this and my take is going to piss off all the spring football nerds out there, all the fanboys. I I'm going to break some news to you that you're probably not going to like. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm, that's a good tease for later. What's interesting yeah. about the way that they have approached this this time is we they announced in a press release that they are interested in expanding and that they are taking uh offering for other people to for these markets to submit proposals to the league very very different than usually you know you'll just hear oh there's new teams and and we got uh this team and we got that team we got this team and we got that team this is the new market this is the new team um but this time they are saying we are putting it out there for these new markets to propose submit proposals of who will be the new teams. That they're going to review uh, what these markets are going to do to support the team, what the infrastructure looks like. They're doing it in the in a little bit of a retrograde way, and I think that's really really smart because and you know not to <laughs> beat a dead horse, but I think that this is directly can be correlated with the fact that the best team in the league. I don't know about by far since I've got my man from uh, you know the Brahmas on here. I don't know if the best the, the best team by far, but you know you have the best team in the league, the Stallions, for every year running, and they have such weak, tough fan support in their home stadium. They don't even open half of it, and the games that are considered good attendance is when they could almost fill up half the stadium, and it's not a big stadium. So I think that the UFL recognizes that. Uh, you know we have. Situations that were going on in Memphis as well, uh, poor attendance. Um, there was poor attendance issues on more teams than one. I think it just stands out the most with Birmingham because they are the best team. They are kind of an all-star team. They do whoop the other teams, and not even they could pack the stadiums. Um, so I think the UFL maybe recognizes that, and that's why they're doing it this way, to uh, hear from these markets and how badly these markets may want them, how badly, uh, you know, how much they could expect support from these markets to come out and be at the games what are your thoughts on the way that they're doing this you said that you found that interesting i like it too yeah uh, to me oh so the actual press release right they put out today uh, i'll just read for it, read read what they quoted here the several core attributes that they're looking for the very first one is fan interest they're looking for fan interest. So to your point, what's going on in Michigan, right? No one shows up for the games. Birmingham have the stadium. San Antonio uh, struggled, right? Third in attendance. Really, the only two teams that did what the, I think the league would find as acceptable was D.C. and St. Louis, right? And then the next thing, they're looking for sports culture, geography. So they're already telling you that, hello, they don't want travel to be crazy. So all those folks out there, one of my – heartbreakers uh, that I'm going to lay out for everybody. Geographies specifically listed, i.e. they don't want to travel to California. 
They don't want to travel to Washington, right? Everything is on the east, you know, Texas and east. Uh, and then you look at uh, population and infrastructure availability. Did you notice the infrastructure, i.e. the stadiums, the last thing they they mentioned? So they're looking for big cities with good geography, big population, and fan interest, right? I think if you were to look at the teams that were left out of the XFL and the USFL, and I know that the UFL owns other properties, they got like two names that are registered, like in Austin, Texas. I don't, I don't really see that happening. If they were to put a fourth team in the state of Texas, every spring football team, yeah, fan on the right. planet would revolt. They would like go burn down something in Arlington. I, I so don't I, think that's going to happen. I'm going to. I don't think it's follow up with, yeah. with what you're talking about. Uh, there's, there's a. Go ahead. Yeah, because they already they already know some of these numbers as far as fan yeah. interest BTW, and sure, sure. Austin I mean, Austin's fantastic. You know that's not there's nothing wrong with that market, but go ahead. Well, there, and they got reasons. year they got years of social media data now, right? So who's been yeah. talking about NFL? Who's been logging in and stuff? Look, news newsflash, everybody. The government's tracking your phones. They know where you live. They know where you're at. They know what you tweet. They know what you look at Instagram, Facebook. Okay, I don't want to break anything to you or get called a conspiracy theorist. But they know where you're at, and they know who's been actively engaged in social media. So some of the old markets. So if you look at the old USFL teams that no longer exist, New Jersey Generals, Philly Stars, Pitt Maulers, New Orleans Breakers, those are pretty strong candidates. You look at old XFL names, LA Wildcats don't exist. I don't think that's happening. But Orlando Guardians and Tampa Vipers, as long as there's a stadium, which we know Orlando's got a sweet stadium down there uh, to play in, and then Seattle Sea Dragons. Uh, I hate, I hate that. That was one of the XFL teams that had like the cult following that everybody really liked and everything. I just don't think it's going to happen, you know. Or everything I could just say could, could, can be, can be uh, completely ridiculous, and maybe all four teams will be out west, right? Because we're talking yeah. two teams in twenty six, two teams in twenty seven. Yeah, you that do want to get the other thing that I brought yeah. up is um that that wasn't in the press release, but the rumor is they well, Mike get Mitchell, to ten teams Mike, in twenty six. Okay, my, 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 Mike Mitchell put that out, so I don't know. He's got okay. that Sports Illustrated inside. Uh, I don't know. You know, he's kind of connected with the league a little bit, so he did put that out on social media today. So I I would think that that's a pretty credible rumor, so to speak. Basically, we're looking at ten teams in twenty twenty six and twelve teams in twenty twenty seven. So the league is looking to add. Four teams over the next two years. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. No, I that so maybe I guess if I was gonna predict, I'd say if 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 either any of the first two teams were on the West Coast, then I definitely think the next two teams are gonna be on the West Coast. You know what I mean? They're gonna try to group them together, the geography. And my last point, and you can tell me what you think about this. Uh, if we do span out east coast to west coast, and they are adding four new teams. How, how far away are we from getting local ownership, right? How far away are we from getting out of the Arlington uh, hub and actually getting teams into their home cities? What do you think about that? That crazy conspiracy. We'll get there. Um, so the thing is, it, it's, it kind of goes both ways. Like when they say geography, I think most people immediately think like, okay, distance, but I think just as much, it might be, uh, grouping teams together as far as like, okay, if we are going to get a Seattle, I think the other team might be Portland so that when they play each other, you have at least two games. We have two fan bases that can both be there attendance wise. Um, because when you talk about geography, people, your mind immediately goes to like, Oh, travel distance. But then you remember all these teams are traveling from the, the same place. So it's not quite as big of a deal. And as we heard from AJ McCarron, um, you know, as while well, through tears streaming down his face that the teams share the same plane. So uh, the, the travel part of it is probably maybe not as much uh, the geographic concern as much as they want to put teams so you can have rivalries, so you can have traveling distance, so you can have more attendance at these games. That was kind of my thought on as far as the geography goes. Yeah. As far as uh, local now, but but at the same time, they might be looking with an eye to the future for what you're talking about. If the plan is sooner than later to get teams living in their local markets, to get rid of the hub, to look into local ownership, then they might be looking at 
geographically, let's make sure some of these teams are kind of close together or we don't have, you know, most of the league in the Midwest and the East Coast and then two teams out West. If that is the plan, and there has been some strong rumors to that effect, that they might be looking at local ownership sooner than later, then yes, you, you might be looking at a situation where the West Coast is, is, is out, both because of the travel concerns, but also because, and you know, not to get, I know you'll just be licking your chops here, not to get too political, but running sports teams is not a super high yield business out on the West Coast these days. Uh, California, Oregon, Washington. Um, ask anybody who's tried to run a sports team in Oakland for the last you know decade yeah. or San Diego in the last decade. It's it's not a super uh, high income situation out there because right my, my always my first like all things equal in a perfect world I would love a team in Portland. Portland's one of the first team markets that comes into my head. It's a top forty market. Um, people in Oregon are insanely passionate about about anything that goes on in Oregon sports wise. Um, there's one of those, you know, kind of, I don't know how to describe it. Soccer mom teams, like, you know, people in San Antonio ride hard as hell for anything that comes out of San Antonio. People in Oregon are the same way. Oregon ducks, huge deal. Portland trailblazers, even when they're bad, the pick, the place is packed. They're one of the few, uh, MLS, um, stadiums in, in, in crowds that always shows up, which by the way, the MLS stadium, the one that they use up there is this old, insanely cool classic building that would be just phenomenal for spring football. I would love to see a team in that place. Um, unfortunately, like we said, it, it all just comes down to what the economics are, what the plan is going forward because the West coast is just a tough place to make money running sports teams, especially football. Football is the most expensive. Uh, it all depends on how it's all going to work. Right. Uh, right off the top. I would be like, man, Portland would be great. It's just so. It's so tough. give me stuff swinging out west. So give me give me your four cities. You got a magic wand. Cost is not an option. Well, we'll, we'll get them? there. I wanted to talk about the individual oh, owners thing okay. real quick. Okay, um, lay it on me. So I know what I mostly see is people being excited about the idea of local ownership, and I get why because if you have good, good local owners, they can take over a lot of the the day to day. Things that maybe the the UFL so far that we've identified might be somewhat shortcomings as far as local advertising, as far as TV spots, about as far as being plugged into the community um, to get people to come out to the games more, to sell up, to uh, support the teams as they're plugged into the communities. And and I understand that that side of it. I just I just want everybody to use caution because you you have so many examples out there in football, mostly of when private ownership gets involved, it can destroy these leagues. That's how it just the original USFL got destroyed. That's how uh, the AAF, which had you know an awesome deal going on down there with, in your market, the San Antonio Commanders, they used to pack out the, the Alamo Dome. It was a cool league. Um, and the now it wasn't individual professional owners. What I'm getting at is it was a primary financial backer who was not, up to snuff who was unscrupulous who didn't handle his business let me also I'll the share, arena uh, football also the arena football league just this past year had terrible ownership it was a mess things were insane it was an embarrassment it, it was a lot of like really bad situations that happened with players players getting kicked out of hotels players you know it, it was it was disgusting and that's what can happen when you have people who are not above board involved professionally in your process now, obviously, we would hope, we would expect, and I'm sure the UFL would say, we're going to do nothing but the absolute best, most thorough vetting of these people as humanly possible to not mess up what we have going on here. But it's not like the, the AAF situation. It's not like you had fly by night. Nobody's running that league. You know, they were a broadcast on NBC. It was, it was Charlie Ebers It was Dick Ebersol's kid. It was Charlie Ebersol. Mm -hmm. Like these were not. Ham and Eggers who were running this and they still got screwed over. So, so I just would caution so, people's excitement about local ownership because it takes it to a whole new level of possible problems. So what happened with the, with the AAF was Ebersol came in with a guy uh, that was going to fund the league for a couple of years. 
And then when the, he didn't have any money, <laughs> no, 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 he 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 had tons of money, and he still has tons of money. He was he got investigated by the FCC, and they locked all his money up because he was keeping them in offshore accounts, which anybody who has any amount of money is doing uh, to avoid taxes, obviously. So then, what happened was he had to scramble because he didn't have the money to make payroll. So he had to scramble around to find someone else. Then that scrub owner of the freaking Carolina Hurricanes hockey team came in and he was the unscrupulous person. He wanted some of the technology that they had as part of the league. If people remember, they had this little gambling gameplay app where there was like a microchip in the ball and they would track it back and forth across the field. That guy got in there and he had bad intentions from the get go. And he, he intentionally, uh, you know, got in, made promises, didn't keep them and got out. So it wasn't, it it wasn't that there was a, a unscrupulous local ownership. This was just uh, rich people doing rich people things and didn't give a crap about the league. The other thing I'll put in is that's every, what happened with the USFL too. Yeah, is every, rich people doing rich people things who don't care? It's just every it, you leave the door open to that. Every successful sports league on the planet has local ownership. So that is yeah. the yeah. ultimate goal. I'll ask you a question and just give me a yes or no, okay? Is Jerry Jones a good owner? Yeah, yes. In my opinion, he, yes. Yeah. Okay, your opinion, because you're a 49ers fan, might be no, yes. No, but no. He's actually I, a Jerry's very involved. Jerry's involved. Uh, he puts his face owner. forward and he Too gets involved. held accountable. Uh, okay, but, you know, I just like that Jerry, that, that Jerry is okay to be held accountable. I like that Jerry will get on the radar and answer questions. You know, someone I, I like that paying. he doesn't hide. To someone he's paying. Anyways, my point is, but Jerry's a good businessman and he yeah. knows how to make money. He doesn't, he didn't accidentally stumble into owning the most valuable sports franchise on the planet. Okay. Number one on the planet. And I, I think that when they, you start looking at local ownerships, you need to look at people who are tied to the community where you're going to be at. For instance, down yeah. here in San Antonio, people, uh, the, uh, headquarters for Valero, which is a you know huge gas company across the world. Yep. Also, there. I'm, I'm sorry if I just glitched out there. Apologize. Yeah, a little bit. You're good. You're good. But uh, you know, so that would be like a great ownership group. Group the Spurs ownership group down here, in San Antonio. Who owns the Spurs? People uh, Holt uh, Caterpillar Holt uh, is a big part of that, as well as probably like 20 other businessmen here in San Antonio all own the Spurs. That'd be like a good group to get involved. Maybe like a HEB, ninth largest retailer in the world down here in San Antonio, Texas area. They're headquartered here. You know, there there's money here. So those are the people that you want, right, to 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 buy your team. And so I think they're gonna look at that. They're gonna look at how many Fortune 500, how many Fortune 100 companies are there, and what kind of interest there there is into getting into the sports uh, ownership, sports franchise ownership deal. So, but in my opinion, you have to have local ownership. Period. All right, this is we'll we'll stop. We know what most of the casuals are here to hear. We're 18, <laughs> eight, 18 and a half minutes in. We'll stop messing around. We'll give you guys what you want. Let's talk about some damn markets. Oops, sorry, <laughs> Ace, Ace, bleep me on that one. <laughs> um all right, so you asked me. So we're gonna do it like this. We're gonna do magic wand. Cost is not an issue, logistics is not an issue. Okay. What would be cool? And then okay. we'll do who do you actually think it's going to be because I am pretty darn confident. There's a part of this that uh, I don't know if people quite remember, but you bringing up the fact that they're gauging fan interest. Well, they already have some of that information in some pretty darn big uh, markets out there. So I have, uh, plus the geographic part also fits. There's two particular markets that I'm, I'm pretty darn confident about. Okay. But okay. We'll go magic wand. I already said Portland. Um, I think that would be magnificent. Again, they, 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 support everything there's another market that's just like portland and actually might be a little bit closer to reality because this state is a tax haven it's a business haven it's a place that encourages especially hollywood is definitely getting a lot more into it as well it's a very unta it's a market that's on the come up because it's a place that provides a lot of tax haven a lot of tax breaks a lot of um you know it's kind of like the delaware of the west and that is Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, top 40 market. 
extremely passionate fans that support everything and anything that that, that people do. They had an AAF team, um, the Salt Lake. Darn, I can't remember the name of the team, but Stallions. Um, the Stallions, yeah, Salt Lake City Stallions. Uh, they came out to those games in pretty decent numbers, were pretty passionate, even though there was some tough weather during those games because the AAF used to start a little bit earlier than the UFL. Um, <coughs> supported that team well. They already have uh, a, a stadium that would work. It's a little bit bigger than what I would generally like. It's Rice Eccles Stadium. It's where the Utah Utes play. Um, it's a little bit bigger than I would prefer the stadiums that they use going forward. And we're going to talk about viable venues when we talk about what are good fits. Um, but Salt Lake City, Utah, I think that has a decent chance. It's not. They have a really big hub airport in that area as well. It's not a super far far flight from uh, Texas to St. Louis, uh, Salt Lake City. Ask me how I know. <laughs> um, not a super far flight. Everything that the rent, everything there is much less. It's going to be, you know, unless you're doing like Idaho or you're doing Wyoming, or you're doing something like that, it's going to be by far your most cost-effective Western hub that you could possibly have. And it's probably, you know, maybe if you want to break into the West a little bit, but not too, too much, it's a great, it's a great, you know, start. Um, right below it, too. And I generally, which for my next one, that I think is kind of a crossover between, like, well, we'll get into the ones that are, We'll do real viable ones a little bit later because I got two more that are on my wish list. And these two, I think uh, I have well three actually, but I think they all have a very good chance of actually happening. Oklahoma City, Canton, Ohio, and Louisville, Kentucky. Um, all three are top 50 markets. Uh, and all three have viable um, D... <laughs> The the, sta the the soccer stadium that they have in Oklahoma City is a little bit shaky, but uh, they'll <laughs> figure it out. They'll figure out a venue. Um, again, they support the hell out of the out of the Oklahoma City Thunder. It's not going to cost a ton of money to run a team there. Oklahoma City is also, or the Oklahoma area, that area around Oklahoma City, is also a top twenty TV market for the UFL currently, with no team. They were one of the top viewership markets for the UFL last year. So that, to me, between between the geography, between the passionate fan base that would be there, um, and you know, I think I don't know if this is how they look at it, but for me, I would prefer areas, venues, states, cities that don't have an NFL presence. <laughs> that that's just to me that just makes sense, and to me, it makes it more fun to look at to cover if a team is the lead football team in the city and not Little Brother. That's just, but that's just, you know, how I look at it. Um, no NFL presence, a state that we know loves football. You know, Oklahoma Sooners, huge fan base. Uh, Tulsa Hurricanes also get a decent amount of uh, support around there. And they're already a, a top 20 TV market for the UFL. Not going to cost a lot of money to run it. It's not a far flight from the Arlington hub. So, and then if they do break off into local ownership, you've got a ton of oil money around there. Um, who knows? Maybe T Boone Pickens want to get involved. <laughs> um, Oklahoma State Cowboys again, a lot of, lot of, uh, lot yeah. of right, right? support. <laughs> well, is <laughs> legacy the people who run the Oklahoma State program now? Um, I did that money, check a lot of oil money, <laughs> a lot of oil money around there. So I think you'll be able to find a, a good local owner. Next up, another one again, top 25 TV market, huge city, 650,000, Louisville, Kentucky. Um, passionately, you know, supports the Louisville Cardinals. Again, like I said, it's a top 50, it's a top 50 population center and a top 25 TV market for the UFL. A little bit further east, but not a super far flight, uh, going out of Texas. And again, a lot of money around there. It's, it's a good combination of, there's a lot of money around there in the horse racing industry, but not a ton, but not a high cost of operation being that it's in Kentucky. Um, no offense, I love Kentucky. One of my favorite things to do, because I hate myself, is to look at real estate in Kentucky and Oklahoma and Texas and just you know daydream about mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. rapper mansion that I could live in for half of what I paid for my house. Um, <laughs> so Kentucky, not going to take a ton of money to run a team there. They passionately support the Louisville Cardinal football team. 
I think it's a match made in heaven. In Ohio, been saying this since day one. I love that as a hub in the U and the USFL. I think that stadium is fantastic. It's a perfect size for these teams in this league, that Tom Benson Stadium, um, where they've been having the Hall of Fame, where they have the high school championship. Um, fantastic there. Ohio, not a ton of cost of living, not a ton of cost of price of doing business up there. Um, they they used to support the team pretty darn well there in the USFL, which also suffered from population from attendance issues. Um, pretty big metro. This is one of the ones that's not in the top 50 TV markets or population centers in America, but it's still a decently sized metro. And you would only need to, you know, the stadium is only like 15,000. So it would look good, still be loud, and you don't need a huge population center to support that. Ohio loves football. I think it's a great place for them to go into. Uh, go ahead with your, your, your wish list, and then we'll go into uh, teams boop, that we think boop. this is actually going to end up being. I, I got my list, but before I go, let me ask you a question to touch base on what you were saying. Do you feel like there's going to be, uh, with this expansion, the creation of a second hub? Do you feel like, because you kind of said Western hub, and I didn't know if you uh, slipped that in there or if you think they're going to have another Arlington hub, but towards the West Coast. No, no, I don't think there'll be another hub. Well, if they don't do local ownership and they do 12 teams, maybe, because that's a lot to have down at the one hub. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just meant a, a, a Western outpost more would have been, you know, we're going to try this Western thing, see how it goes, and if we want to keep going, yeah. Salt Lake City think is where we're going to start it off at. Think about 12 teams. Or maybe the team I'm about, or maybe the place I'm about to say. 12 I teams. I think it will be. 12 teams with all the players plus support staff plus social media plus all the other stuff all in Arlington, Texas. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot, a lot. there. But uh, I'll, I'll go with my my list. Well, and and I'm I'm kind of like you. I'll look at teams that don't have NFL teams or maybe are what you would consider jaded, you know, like a jaded team. Uh, so I go first with San Diego. To me, San Diego, uh, back from the AAF days, you know, down in San Antonio, we had AAF as our uh, uh, our league down here, and everybody who had an AAF team felt like they were jaded. But we had a cool little rivalry with the San Diego fleet between the San Antonio Commanders and the fleet. But uh, I definitely – and then also San Diego losing the Chargers to Los Angeles. That whole city felt super jaded. Uh, and I think you would get that St. Louis type of support there. And there's a stadium that uh, is in usable shape. Maybe it's not NFL ready or NFL quality, but hey, there's they're they're there and they're ready. So that would be my my first go to. The other team I would go to would be Orlando. So you had the XFL had or uh, Orlando Guardians. They didn't make the cut, and then the AAF had the or Orlando Apollos. Didn't make the cut. We still own uh, the. The original yeah. XFL had the Orlando Rage. Yeah, the Orlando the, Rage with the, the, with the red franchises. Yeah. yeah, with the red guy. Yeah, yeah. with the red Hulk gun and helmet. So I definitely think that would be one. I'd put one in Orlando, have a team in Florida. That's a no-brainer. You Real stole quick, my I wanted to also say oh. having a team in Orlando gives you an awesome place for a championship game. Sure. Well, that Camden because, World Stadium, right? That's it's, it's yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it because it's it's this is no shade to the league, but I think it's a good idea to put the championship game in a place that people would want to go vacation anyways. So it's like, oh, well, you know, we might not want to just go to the UFL championship game. We might not travel for that, but we can go to the UFL championship and we can go to Disney and we can go to Universal Studios. You know, except you for no, to no shade to St. Louis and San Antonio. No shade. <laughs> uh, but I, I think that would be, I think that'd be a good idea. That's why, you know, having Las Vegas was a good idea for a while too. Uh, shameless plug. Well, I, before I get going about San Antonio and the championship game, tons of stuff happening sports related down here in San Antonio. And we just may be one of the premier spots real soon for a UFL championship. But uh, keep your eye out for the next uh, Brahma bullpen. I got some stuff in there. But oh, uh, here we go. You, you stole my Salt Lake City take because definitely the Stallions in Salt Lake City yeah. is one of them. So then, and, you, and also the Canton, Ohio. I think Canton, Ohio deserves one. They're all teams, all cities that uh, don't have NFL teams, but I think would support yeah. NFL teams. I like your Portland pick, and I'll just tell you why real quick. Uh, back in the day, 
uh, San Antonio and Portland, the only pro teams we had were basically like the Spurs and the Trailblazers. And I always felt like Portland was one of the cities that kind of was always getting jaded. The NFL would tease it so that the yeah. whoever owned that other team would get like a free stadium somewhere. So I like your Portland pick. But my four, San Diego, Orlando, Salt Lake City, and uh, Canton, Ohio. So we'll move on to teams that we – are places we think it will actually be. Can you guess what the number one TV market for the UFL viewership that did not have a team was? Wow, man. I, I'll take a guess. I'm going to go out on a limb and just say Las Vegas. New Orleans, Louisiana. Really? Interesting. Yes, sir. It was their number five viewership TV viewership market for TV. Bing, bang, boom, right? Already showed that they can support a team. Uh, the the uh, two lane that the, yeah, they already have a, they already have everything all set up. They already have a name that they're comfortable with that they know. New Orleans Breakers. Um, the two lane stadium is a perfect size for a UFL team. Good travel distance from uh, from the hub. It's all there, man. It's all there. I, I think it, you know, and it's a football. Those people supported the Saints. Regarded there were some lean, lean years over over time, um, you know. And then you got LSU in in the house as well. Uh, Tulane, they they love their football in Louisiana. New Orleans was a pretty massively supportive market for the UFL. Um, so I, I feel like that's probably going to be number one of like who it's actually going to end up being. I think I think New Orleans is going to be one of these four teams. Um, do you got? Let's go your number one. Who you think? it's actually going to end up being if if i was going to put money on it it was going to it's going to be the orlando squad the that i'm going okay. orlando that that's if i was going to bet that's number one so the next uh interesting one here i don't think this is going to happen because i think it's a little bit too out of uh out of the way but just a shout out madison wisconsin was the number six viewership area I like for the it. ufl um i mean hell <laughs> wisconsin loves their football that's interesting i think it's uh well i mean hell there's some there's a detroit team so who knows um which by the way ton, ton of ton of viewership in the uh michigan area that three of the top markets were all uh michigan so that's that's a pretty pretty beast but yeah number six madison wisconsin uh interesting one of the markets that already um, has been tested by spring football a couple of times um, and is a top five population center. A lot of people forget that this is a top five population. Actually, I think it might be number six. Um, Phoenix, Arizona. There you go. Uh, Arizona has uh, Phoenix has a, a massive. The, the airport there is, is the Sky Hub. It's a massive airport. Easy in and out. It, again, cost of living. It doesn't cost a ton of money to run a business in Arizona. It's already been pretty darn successful in the past. The AAF had a, a Phoenix team. I think that that could happen, um, most definitely. Between the cost of running it, the ease of travel, getting in and out again, and especially if they want to pair it with a Salt Lake City team, you got the four corners right there, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, Colorado. Could be a good little uh, regional, uh, regional matchup, regional rivalry. Um, I think that that could be a, a big one. And like I said, people forget, looking it up now, yeah, it is the number five most populous uh, metro in, in, in America. So ton of people. It's been successful before. Easy in and out. Probably could get a good deal on the stadium. I, I could foresee Phoenix being one of those teams. Um, you got another one that you think that you think is is going to happen. Yeah, I would probably go with somewheres on the – the east coast and i would think that Northeast. atlanta yeah well I, I think that atlanta would probably get a team somewhere in that uh you know atlanta georgia area and then you know up there in new york new jersey philly somewhere in that northeast coast so i think we'll probably get an orlando team one of those southeastern city teams something like atlanta uh, I'd, I'd be cool seeing it go somewhere else other than there. It'd be neat to see Mississippi get one, but I don't think they got enough a city without a big enough population. I think one of the biggest cities 
population wise in Mississippi is like 200,000, right? So like we're talking, yeah. you need to get up into that million people range to try to even uh, support it. So I think we'll want to get one in Florida, one in Georgia, one up there in the Northeast and then Canton, Ohio would be sweet. Those are kind of my so four that I think. Columbus is, is a top 10 viewership uh, area market for, for the UFL. So between Columbus, between Canton being able to easily support it, I, I think there's a very strong chance of Ohio. Again, as my expected, what I think will happen, um, Oklahoma City, number 20, pop, most populous city in America, top 15 viewership market for the UFL. This is easy, right? We're coming between these these places that are uh, crossovers between populous cities. That are crossovers between <coughs> populous cities and top viewership markets for the league. Um, I, I think that's that's an easy one right there. Uh, Oklahoma City again doesn't cost a ton of money to to run it. Um, doesn't cost a ton of money to run it. Good population already supports it through viewership without even having a team. I think those are the best ones. Um, so would love it. Would love to see Portland. Would love to see Salt Lake City. But I think our first two up will be Oklahoma City, Phoenix, Orlando, like you were talking about. And New Orleans. Uh, I think that those are the strongest. The strongest one to me is New Orleans. They already have the history with the Breakers. They're a huge city. Uh, also, again, it gives them a great, a fantastic site for a championship game. So that's added in there, too. Very, very easy travel from the hub. Doesn't cost, cost a ton of money to, to run a business down in Louisiana. Um, tons, tons of tax breaks for stuff down there. If you know, like Hollywood does a lot of stuff in Louisiana and Georgia for those reasons. Um it, there's already people who like to own sports teams down there, the Benson family, um, and their their cohorts. So, yeah, I don't think you'll have a tough time mean, finding ownership if you do go local ownership. So, you mean the Benson family from San Antonio that make all their mm. money in Texas? Anyways, mm. that, that's always just hey. the Benson family is always a sore sus, uh, sore topic for me because they should have brought an NFL team to San Antonio. They made their money here in San Antonio, and then they buy an NFL team in New Orleans. I mean, it's ridiculous. I know, and I was looking at it for a minute. They were gonna go, baby, go come to San Antonio. Yeah, I remember another they played episode. A couple, yeah. Tell you what. <laughs> well, we hope you've enjoyed this episode. Tell us in the comments uh, where we missed, what you guys think that we should have we should have brought in, what sites that you guys think are good UFL relocation uh, places. I think we covered it pretty well. I think our top four is pretty darn close. I think the first two you're gonna see is gonna be New Orleans. And possibly, possibly in Oklahoma or somewhere in Ohio, um, or like you said, Orlando. Maybe Orlando and New Orleans come in different sets, right? You have two fun places, or maybe it comes at the same time. Regionally, they're fairly close. Please check my guy out, the Brahma bullpen. He'll be posting up later on this week, right? You got a new Brahma bullpen coming episode coming up. Sure do, and I'll just like I said, just because you had a team before doesn't give you an advantage. Your city. Football, listen to me, football, football maniacs, spring football maniacs, the city Push you live it. in, the yeah. city you live in needs to contact the UFL and push for a team. They are not just coming back because they were there once. Love it. You'll also be covering the, the San Antonio Caballeros when the IFA ch kicks off this summer. Your guy right here, I'll be looking at for the uh, Baltimore Lightning. And we'll also be doing, obviously, overall coverage. So stay tuned for that. More football leagues, more coverage from the United Football Media because they are the number one spring football media group. I'm Eric of DAR Sports Media. Check out our YouTube page. Search that on YouTube, DAR Sports Media. We got people from the UFM popping in every now and again on our shows. Our guy, Josh, we'll have to have you back, too. Aggies, big, big, I almost said a cuss word. Big Ooh. game coming up this weekend. Ooh. It's all coming down to... Texas A&M and Texas University. Um, hater. I'm a hater. In the comments. In the comments. Let us know where you think a, UF, a United Football League team should go. Which ones that we missed. We thank you for jumping in on here. A very exciting day in spring football. We are very excited to bring it to you. This is Tell Me About It on United Football Media.